Hi everyone, today I want to share my solution to a question that I received from Armando. Armando is a member of our community and he was wondering if it's possible to load only the line that contains a specific number, let's say an item number, or the lines of a specific item numbers that are within a range. So I'm very sure there are many ways to do this. If you have a better and more efficient solution, please write that down on the comments that I, I, I could love to learn that from you. If you like what you see here, remember to subscribe and let's start. So here I have the files. Let me show you here. I have my folder demo on my desktop and this folder has three files, file, file one, two and three. Here is the content of that, uh, those files. All of them have three columns. The titles of those columns are the same, and all of them have one sheet that is called sheet one. You can see file three has items from 60 to 78. I'm gonna close that. And file two has items from 40 to 58. And file one has items from 10 to 28. Okay, I'm gonna close that. And here I have a blank workbook. Once you have the blank workbook, let's go to data get data from file from folder. Here is our demo folder on my desktop. Double click there and I click open. Here I have the list with the files that I just showed you. We're going to transform this information. So select transform data. The Power Query Editor will open. I'm using Microsoft 365. Here is the table with our files and the names of those files. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a parameter because I want to have this path in a more dynamic way. So if I change the location of my folder, I can change that information in my parameter, not in the code. I don't need to be changing that in the inside of the um, advanced editor. So it makes things easier for me. So I'm going to go to ma uh, manage parameters, new parameter. And the name of uh, the parameter will be my directory. Type, I'm going to say I want text and it can be any value and here my current value is the, the location of my folder say OK and here I have my parameter if I make any changes I can change the text over here and then my query will follow so to connect my query with my parameter I'm going to go to view and advanced editor and here I'm going to replace this that is the same text that I have in my parameter. I'm going to replace it by my directory. That is what I just created. It's on the list that you can select it. And I'm going to click done. So nothing changed here. But now you can see here in the formula bar that the folders are coming from my directory, which is nothing but the directory where I have my folder. OK, so let me do the, let me make this a little bit bigger. Control Shift plus here and I'm gonna hide the section with the queries so we have a little bit more room to see here what I'm gonna do I want to extract the content of each file so I'm gonna go to add column custom column I'm gonna call it my content I'm gonna say Excel workbook open parenthesis and it's asking me for a workbook as binary that is inside of my content column here on the right you have you have a list of available columns select content double click comma and i'm going to say that i want to promote my headers let's so i'm going to say true close parenthesis and i'm going to say okay excellent here i have the content of my files i just need this column and also i want to keep the name of the files because i want to identify where the information is coming from so I'm going to select the column name, press and hold the control key and select my content column. I'm going to right click and I'm going to remove other columns. OK, now I'm going to expand my content and I want to extract only the information that comes from my data column. And I don't want to use the mm, column name as prefix. And I'm going to say OK. Here we have let me, if you click on the blank space be beside the table, I'm going to get this one up. Now you can see the content of each file. So we have three columns, as I mentioned, and all the lines that I show you on each file. Next thing, I'm going to add a column because 
what I want to do. From here, I have a column that is called item. Okay. In the past, I show you how to extract only the information that meets a specific text. But in this case, because we're talking about numbers, the process is quite different. So I'm going to leave the link here if you want to take a look to that uh, uh, tutorial where I'm showing you how to load only the information that has a specific text. So you can see how different this process is. Okay. From here, I want to extract the information that is coming from the item column. And to do that, I'm going to add another column. So I go to add column, custom column. And this is going to be my list of items or items list. What I want to bring here is from uh, the available columns, uh, double click at data. From that column, I'm going to open a uh, square bracket. I want to bring the information that is coming from my column item. Close the square bracket is this column that I have in here. Okay. Close the square bracket. There are no errors. And I'm going to say, okay. Now you can see that we have that information as a list. Now what we need to do is identify which items are within the range that I'm going to provide. Let me rename this column. My column data will be original table. So let me go to add column, custom column. I'm going to say within range. And here I'm going to say list, select. I need to provide a list. Uh, the list is coming from the items list column. So here on the right, I'm going to select item list and double click there. And need to provide a um, function. My function will be that each. So I'm going to say each and I'm going to provide uh, the underscore. So what I'm, each is kind of a mini function. <laughs> so from each item that you find on the list, that's why the underscore right? So each item through the list, bring anything that is greater or equal, let's say to 24. And again, the underscore, look at each item and bring everything that is lower or equal, let's say 1060. Close parentheses. And okay. And it works. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> so happy it worked. Okay. So list Oh, uh, I have a list in here, but now this list has been filtered by this criteria here, which is excellent. And we haven't expanded any of our tables. So that is fantastic. Now, what we need to do is to merge this information with information that we have in our table and bring only the items that are matching, but we cannot merge list with a table. I need to convert this to a table first and then merge. I don't need the items list column anymore. I select that and I delete. So uh, let's go to add column, custom column. I'm going to leave that custom uh, title. I, right now, it's not a big deal if I don't change it. And I go here and I'm going to say table dot from list, open parentheses. And I'm going to say my list is coming from the within range uh, column. Double click there, close parentheses, and I'm going to say OK. And it brought me an error. And let's see what the error says. Yeah, I always forget. OK, I'm going to double click here uh, to my added custom tree. Then I need to rename my steps, that reminds me. So here I miss one part of the formula. So I select the list and I have to provide a splitter. So I don't want to split my information, but I need to provide this information anyways. So I, I think it's a splitter, a split by nothing. This one, splitter, a split by nothing. And I have to open and close parentheses. There is nothing that I, I want there. And I'm gonna close the parentheses for the table from list. And I'm gonna say, okay. I always forget that part. Excellent, now we have our list converted into a table. And you can notice, you will notice here that we have the red uh, bar, like showing like an error, but the error is gone, right? So just go one step uh, back and go back to your last step and then the bar becomes green. Okay, I didn't rename my steps. Okay, let's go back here. Let me rename this, right click and rename or F2. And this is gonna be a list of items. And this is criteria. Okay, remove other columns, and this is going to be 
convert it. this to table. Okay, this is easier when you need, need to look back at anything. And other thing that sometimes I do, I have those, I remove the spaces between the other uh, steps that I didn't rename. So it just makes it easier when you're looking into the advanced editor. It, it looks cleaner. It just helps me. Perfect. Okay, I go back to my last step. And now I can merge. I can merge this table with these tables. Okay. The other thing that I noticed, I haven't uh, removed the extension on this column. I will do that at the end. But for now, let's merge these columns. So if you try to merge a query, let's go home. And I'm going to go merge queries, merge query as new, so I can get the code from there. And I'm going to merge the demo with the demo query. And I have here the columns that identify that it could match, right? So, and I'm going to keep this uh, join, the left outer, and I'm going to say OK. So I will have a new query. This is the code that I need. So I'm going to select that, control C, and I go back to my demo query. I'm going to add a column. So go add column, custom column, and I'm going to call it merge. Uh, I'm going to paste that code. And here I'm going to move demo down and the other demo as well. Down. And the name of the column that I want to add to that, um, that merge. I'm going to put it down as well. The first table will come from my custom column. Custom. And that custom column has only the items that are matching with the items that are within my range. So when Power Query converted my list to a table, assign a name to that column, and that name is column one. That is what I'm going to replace here instead of name. I'm going to replace that as column one. So you need to make sure that you spell this in the same way that the, that column is named. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. Um, the second uh, table will be from my column original table. So that is where all my information is coming from. And I just forgot to put the square brackets on the custom. So I'm going to uh, have square brackets. And I'm going to say original table, that is right here. And let me go back to my custom because I forgot that. Otherwise, I'm going to get an error here. And I'm going to say, and the name of this is uh, item. Our original uh, table has that column identified as item. The name of the column will be uh, matching items and the left outer Join kind is the one that I want to use for this merge, and I'm going to say OK. And here we have our tables connected only with the items that are within the range. I don't need these two columns anymore. I'm going to select both and delete them. And actually, my original table as well, I don't need that anymore. Just fantastic. So one thing to watch for is let's go for that filtering criteria. And if that criteria changes, in this case, I have between 24 and 60, right? So let's say if I want to change the 60 for 40, and I can click at the check mark here. I go to my last step. Now you will notice that the third file has an error. And the error says that column one on, on the table wasn't found. And that is because now my table that had that information with the matching items doesn't have any items to match. So Power Query is not finding that match. Uh, the, you can easily fix this. You can select that column, right click and remove errors. That's all that you need to do. But it's important that you have this step because if you change the criteria, then you won't have a line saying error. So is just preventing that to happen. So excellent. Now we're ready to expand. Here on my merge column on the top, I click at the rows and I want to bring all the columns, let's say, and I'm gonna say, okay. Um, my first column will have the item uh, number and I need to expand the second column that has the matching items. I'm gonna click at the row and I don't want to bring the item. So let me show you what that has. So it has the item, the description and the sales. I don't want to bring the item because I have that here already. So let me expand, remove the item. 
I want to bring the description and the sales. I don't want to use the original name as a prefix, and I'm going to say OK. And here we have only the items that match with that specific range. So if we change the range, let's go and filter in criteria. And I say now that I just want that anything that is equal to 24. Let me remove everything else. I go to my last step. And I have only the line that matches with 24. Okay, 24 here, 194. I'm going to go to my, uh, I think, expand my content. It was 24 with 194. Excellent. It's working properly. So there is one last thing that I'm missing, and it is to remove the extension from my name, from the name of my file. So I select that column. So I'm going to select my name column. I'm going to go to Transform, Extract, Text before the limiter. My delimiter is the dot or the period. So dot, I say OK. And now I have the name of my file. Let's go back to the filtering criteria and let me provide again a range of information. So and underscore to look at every single line or every single item on the list. And that's going to be, I was saying, lower or equal, let's say, to 68 in this case. And this one I'm going to say greater or equal to 24. I'm going to go to my last step. Now you can see that the list is higher because it's starting 24 and ends in 68. Let's transfer this to Excel. Oh, let me delete the merge. I don't need that merge uh, query anymore. I'm going to right click and delete. So that was just to help me to get the code and that's all. Okay, I'm going to go to home, close and load, close and load too. I'm going to select only create connection and I'm going to say OK. So I'm going to right click at my demo query. If you don't see the queries here, uh, you can go to data and select queries and connections. I'm going to right click at the demo query and I'm going to say load to and let's load it as a table and on the existing worksheet and I'm going to select B2. I'm going to say OK. And here we have our information. Uh, coming from these files with these item numbers. Oh, I didn't change the name of this column. Let me go back to my query quickly. Double click at the query. And I'm going to just change this. There is no other way that I can change it. Here. Okay, here. On the expanded merge, expanded merge, here I have the opportunity to change the name of column one. So I'm going to Select that. So this is the name of the column, and this is the uh, the option to rename. And I'm going to say item. And enter, and it should work. Perfect. Now it's item here. I don't want to add one more step. There, there are way too many now. So as I said, I'm very sure there are there are better ways to do this, but uh, so I don't want to delay this information anymore. So here is our name, item, description, and saved. Filter before expanding the table. Okay. The only thing that I don't know is how this may impact performance. So I prepared this with a very small amount of data, and it worked well. But I'm not sure how this may impact uh, performance with a larger data set. So you may want to give it a try, and this might be an option for you. I really enjoy solving this um, question. So if you know a better way um, that is more efficient, please write it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate if you can share that information with all of us uh, so we all can learn. I hope you found this information useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.